What's up guys? I got something a little bit different for you today. I'm out here with my buddy Bill Smith who owns Coastal Land and Wildlife Services. He's a professional trapper. He specializes in coyotes and predators on these big plantations in the low country of South Carolina. I'm riding along with him today. We're running his traps and uh, we're gonna see what he's caught. These big beautiful plantations are full of wildlife and they come out here and they want to hunt quail and stuff and you can't have these coyotes and different predators out here eating the quail I'm looking at right now turkey track so he's helping keep everything in balance how long you been trapping uh got started when I was about nine um, I was playing around in my yard and I found an old trap that was my dad's up under the edge of our house that he had just I guess tossed away or whatever and I spent all day playing with it trying to figure uh -huh. out how to set it and when dad got home from work I had to ask him how to set it and he showed me and we lived on the river back then. He showed me how to set it and he told me if I could catch something in it that we would buy some traps and you know start trapping. And it took me like a month I finally caught a raccoon. <laughs> and we drove all the way up to Spartanburg. That was the only place back then to buy traps. <clears throat> we went up to Spartanburg and bought a few dozen traps and just been going at it ever since it was always kind of a hobby how many years you've been going professional now so i've been on my own for three years full time um but i've been getting paid to trap for probably 10 or 12 years and i just decided to go full time with it three years ago and there was a big enough demand and i hated working <laughs> the factory life enough that I figured I'd at least give it a shot. It's kind of the dream for all of us. Yeah. It's worth Maybe it I so far. do this YouTube thing full time eventually if people uh, <laughs> yeah. keep watching. These traps are all, well, you boil them and then wax them. Yeah, you gotta boil them, dye them, dye them, and, and then wax them. The dye makes them, the dye is what turns them black and makes them rust proof more or less. Gotcha. And then the wax, it's is, like a lubricant, it speeds it up. And so, it has nothing to do with smell? Yeah, it does kind of seal them. Okay. You know, for, for scent purposes or whatever, but like a wax trap and an unwaxed trap, you can see with the naked eye like how much faster a that wax one trap will. is. So you're going to set one right here? all right guys i'm gonna do my best to explain what's going on right now and if i use the wrong terminology please don't come at me right now what bill's doing is driving an anchor for the trap into the ground so he'll drive that anchor in with the hammer and then he can pull the pin back out and basically what it does is once the animal's trapped it keeps them from getting away nice and tight now he's dug out a little bit of a hole there and that's where he's going to set his trap but first he's taken a piece of it's not cotton it's a synthetic fluff and putting it under the trigger plate of the trap that way dirt and things doesn't get up underneath there once he's got that in there he's going to set the trap one thing he told me and i learned that's very important is to have that trap bedded in there solid. If the animal comes along and steps to the side of the trap and feels any kind of a give or a hesitation or a, just a not solid footing, he's gonna spook out and take off. Then he takes his, uh, I think you call that a sieve. I don't even know what you call that piece. Uh, someone drop it in the comments. And he's just going to dust it lightly with dirt. Real easy, just like that. And that's a set trap. 
and fast forward to the next morning in this exact trap, Bill has a coyote. Now I wasn't there the next day, but he shot a little bit of video just to let me know that one of the traps we had set worked. Perfect foothold, uh, coyote was dispatched quickly and uh, it's pretty cool to know one of the traps we had set caught a coyote the next day. We're towards the end of the trap line, and I think we finally got something. A little fox. He done slipped up. We ran probably 90 traps today. We're towards the end and finally got one. It's probably attributed to warm weather and the animal's not really moving. It's hot today, but it's, a big gray fox, dude. it's pretty. So we dispatched him humanely, nice and quick. He didn't feel much. Um, but that's a big old male gray fox, beautiful coat on it. And I know some of you guys are probably thinking, you know, that's so sad, but these animals, they got to come off the properties. You got to keep their numbers in check. There, there is another one that will come and fill his spot sooner than later. But, uh, we're going to keep running traps and, uh, maybe we'll get a coyote or something. All right, y'all, this is day two of riding with Bill. Um, and we're pulling up, didn't take long. We're maybe 10 traps in, and there is a pretty bobcat on this trap. I'm gonna go check him out. Now, this is rough to look at sometimes, but like I told you guys before, these are predators and they got to be taken off of these properties. Ooh, he mad. <coughs> now, so the first day I came up and trapped with Bill, it was unseasonably warm and we got that one fox and then he got a coyote in one of the sets that we made that day, but I drove back up this morning. The temperatures are much cooler and it's better for trapping and better for the animals moving. But uh, let me go ahead and dispatch this. It's quick and painless, y'all. Animal didn't feel anything. And uh, it's one less predator on this property, on this plantation that's gonna be out here eating things like turkeys, young deer, quail, ducks a female bobcat she has pretty pretty decent fur but nothing like uh, what they get up north um, but a beautiful animal we're gonna put her in the truck and keep moving so I've been watching Bill's YouTube videos and I learned something it's always set on sign and it's a prime example of some sign right there some bobcat scat and we had a busted out trap just reset it bobcat got some track right there. bobcat tracks right there so next couple days there'll probably be one in this trap it must be bobcat day for us because we're on our second bobcat sun ain't even hardly up oh Pretty cat. That cool weather did the trick, got him moving. Yeah. 
Yeah. Listen to him growl. Is that a male, you think? We'll find out Maybe. in a second, huh? Spotted up a lot better. Pretty. Pretty pelt on that one, y'all. Mm -hmm. How long ago do you have this uh, this set set up? About a week and a half. Week and a half. So it's pretty cool. This is honestly the closest I've ever been to a bobcat. Pretty pelt on her. I just trap where there's lots of bobcats. Yeah. A bunch of states, you gotta draw tags for them and stuff. Even the trap, you know. Yeah. And you only get like one bobcat tag a year. Now, um, here this, it's not really bobcat season yet, right? But right. you get a, a permit to trap. Yeah, coyotes are really the only thing you can mess with year round mess with year round but even to trap to trap anything you got to have a permit if it's not in our regular trapping season I want you guys to watch this he's gonna spread dirt across that thing I keep waiting for it to go off <laughs> So that's like the most important part about trapping is bedding the trap good and solid so they don't feel any give yeah. when they step to it right because i mean you know that's the only spot that that's what that that's fires. important so if they come up and step on this or on this or anything see how it wiggles a little bit yeah. like that you, you don't gotta, want that yeah, you got to pack it in and think about this folks you got to out of all these woods, how many acres is this property? This one's Thousands? About 3, 000, yeah. 3, you're, 3,500. You're getting something to stand on a two inch pan. It it can't be easy. See, this is the part I was talking about right here. I keep waiting for him to get <laughs> to go off on his hand. Just like that. Alright. It's not a coyote. It's not even close. It's a possum. That's a big possum, dude. Yeah, that's a trophy possum. Trophy possum. Yeah. Age them at six and a half years. Yeah, oh at least, yeah. 120 inches, yeah, 140 we, inches. We uh we manage trophy possums around here. <laughs> <laughs> Got a raccoon, first coon of the day. I've been waiting for this because we have an overabundance of raccoons on my hunting property. I just wanted to see one. But the raccoons are just as bad as some of the other predators, if not worse. Especially this property has a lot of turkeys on it. And they're hell on the turkey eggs. So if you want to help your turkey population, you need to cut down on your raccoons. As well as just getting into things and eating your deer corn. You got to keep them in check. Get them, Hines. That's a big thing, huh? It's got a 20 pounds. nice pelt on it, too. Mm -hmm. 
Now, will you catch behind a raccoon? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll no, you were it. saying that possums. Yeah, possums, they just, man, they stink so much. And it's weird because, like, <coughs> coyotes and stuff, they'll eat a possum if they catch it. Really? But if there's a dead possum, you know, they, they want nothing to do with it. I wouldn't eat a dead possum either. So we're on the new property now. Uh, this all just got set last night. That was part of the reason I picked today to come because I was like, oh, it'll be good. But then we did really well on the properties that he's been trapping all along. Uh, two bobcats in, a possum, and a raccoon. It's been a pretty active day. Bo, you're gonna have to call us the Bobcat Boys because <laughs> we're pulling up on our third, I can't do that with my left hand, third Bobcat of the day. Oh, that's a pretty one, man. All spotted up and everything. Ooh. He's feisty boy. Bianca, you wanted a cat for uh, Christmas and this is it. I'm gonna bring him home. That's a big time. That's what we're out here for. Pretty coat on that thing, look at that. Make a nice. It's spotted all the way up the back too. Beautiful. Is that, that's a boy. Yeah, that's a Tom. Tomcat. Females don't get that big. I mean, that's from my armpit to my feet stretched out. Big boy. He's out here. I feel how heavy he is. Oh my goodness. Take that, would you? That is a big old tomcat. He stinks too. Big old paws on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's rotten. Oh, sting Damn. Whew. Man, and we still got one more property to go. Well, coon, coon number, was this the third coon for the day? Yeah, third one out of here. The new property, he was saying, you're generally going to catch a bunch of coons on the first go round, yeah. till you kind of thin them out, and then you'll start getting other predators. But this place hasn't been trapped in four this, five years too. So. And this spot's a hundred yards from where we just caught that gigantic bobcat. But you can see what happens when you don't trap a place for a while. I mean, just like this, we've only checked what a dozen traps out here, probably. Yeah, we got four catches. Wild man. All right, got another coon. This one's a big one. Okay. Easy, bro. You be easy. You can call them boars, but most people around here call them boars. Bow coon. Bow coon. Big old bow coon. Look at that big old bow coon. What are you guys do? Come here. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good dog. He's a good dog. Yeah, you're a good boy. Yeah. So we are back at the trap shack, so to speak. Um, but right here, you can see where Bill processes his traps. And when they come, when they come in off being used, you do what? You boil them in here? We boil them down in here, start out with clean water just to get a good cleaning on them, knock all the dirt and everything off, and then we'll put the trap dye in, and the dye kind of gives them like a rust proof. Now that looks coating. like, that looks custom, what is that? That is a live well out of an aluminum boat. <laughs> so, I got so many traps, I used to do them in small pots, and I got this one rigged up, now I can do about four or five dozen at a time, so it That's pretty slick. speeds things up a lot. Making the best out of what yeah. you got on a burner setup. Yeah. 
And then... But we dye them in there, and then I got my wax pot. Got about, I don't know, 10 or 15 pounds of wax in here. We'll melt that down and dip them in the wax and give them a good coating, and that kind of, like, it scent proofs them, and it lubricates them, too, so it, it speeds up the... the the rapidness snap. of the fire on the trap so that's pretty cool and that's the old tried and true way and then one, once you take them out of that you, you put them straight in a box like that yep. and don't touch them again so you don't get any human scent on them all right y'all so that's going to be the end of the uh second day we had to come out i had to come out the second day because the first day like i said wasn't amazing we got that one fox and he got a coyote the next day but we did just have a really good day five raccoons and a big old bobcat look how pretty that pelt is on him and uh we had we actually had two female bobcats but one of them was disposed of in a disposal site before we caught all these other critters here um but that's going to be it for this one guys i hope you enjoyed it uh there's no cook in this one which feels kind of weird for me but I want to thank Bill for having me out not once, but two days in a row, uh, showing us what it is he does and how he does it. And, you know, all this stuff is all his knowledge. I'm just riding along for this one. He also has a YouTube channel. What's the name of your YouTube channel? Coastal Coyote Trapping. Coastal Coyote Trapping. I'll put that in text and I'll put it in the description. Um, but you guys check him out. He's, if you want to learn more about trapping, he's got a bunch of super interesting stuff in there from how to set to how to prep your traps. All that stuff is in there. Um, but, uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.